I don't know about you, but I love to be in the presence of the Lord with the people of God because I understand that there's an exponential increase of grace and anointing and power when we come together. The Bible says where two or three are gathered together in my name, there is, I am there in the midst. And I know you have your private prayer and you got your own Bible study, but it's something when we get together. There, there, is a, there, is, there is an increase of the anointing of God when we get together. He said one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. Where any two of you are gathered together in my name, touching and agreeing as asking anything, it shall be done. Amen. I don't know about you. I need you. You need me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, since y'all got this, this, this turkey and ham hangover. <laughs> We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you and we just praise you, Lord God, for your presence. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for gathering us together, Lord. And Father, coming through whatever that the, your people have come through this week and Lord, and the things that they've been dealing with. Father, we pray right now, God, that you release new angels on behalf of your people to assist them to help them, Lord God, in every situation that they are facing. Father, we ask that you would release your glory and your power in this place today, that your word will go forth with power. Father, that the revelation of Jesus Christ would be released and the true Christ, the true anointed one will be manifest in this place. Lord, we thank you, O oh God. Let the sick be healed. Let the lost, let, let those that are lost come to know Jesus Christ. Let devils be casted out. Let the glory of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost be so powerful in this place, Lord God, and evident. We thank you, Lord. Anoint me today, Lord, to share the word that you have given. Lord, that it might impact the lives of your people. We bind the works of the enemy. We bind spirits of blindness that would blind the minds of the people. We pull down the strongholds of deception in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we ask, O oh God, that you will give us, Lord God, to walk in freedom and liberty in Jesus' name. And we give you praise. And we say everything that shall be accomplished, Lord God, will give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. I want you to turn with me as I share, uh, I want you to turn with me to the book of 2 Samuel. We've been talking about spiritual warfare and we're still in that vein. And uh, we're going to talk some more about um, uh, spiritual warfare and, and uh, casting out devils, removing barriers, breaking uh, bondages. And today, to this morning, praise God, I want to share out of, out of a couple, two different openings going to start in in uh, second samuel the um the fifth chapter second samuel five i want you to i want you to uh we're going to start at the fourth verse of 2 Samuel 5. When you have it, say amen. Just let me switch my translation here to King James Version. Now my, now my whole my whole chapter changed. I'm defeating the technology. It says in verse 4, starting at verse 4, it says, David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. 
In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned 30 years and 30 and three years over all of Israel and Judah. And the king and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jubasites, the inhabitants of the land, which spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking David cannot come hither. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, the same as the city of David. And David said on that day, Whosoever getteth up to the gutter and smiteth the Jubasites and the lame and the blind that are hated of David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Therefore, said he, excuse me, therefore they said, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. So David dwelt in the fort and called it the city of David. And David built round about from Milo and inward. And verse 10 says, and David went on and grew great and the Lord God of hosts was with him. Now also I want you to look at first is second Corinthians, second Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10 verse going to start at verse 3. When you have it, say amen. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in readiness to revenge all disobedience. When our obedience is fulfilled. I want to I want to talk about today about demolishing strongholds or taking the strongholds of Zion taking the strongholds of Zion One of the first things that David did after he became king over the whole nation of, of Israel, Judah and Israel, that he, 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 the first, the very first thing that, that he did was he took the strongholds of Zion. Now, it, it, this is a prophetic picture. This is a prophetic picture of what, of what Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians the 10th chapter when he talks about that though we war though we're in the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds so I want to talk about demolishing strongholds taking the strongholds of Zion because one of the things that I believe that we that that is so necessary in the church is that that there there is even though we have given our lives to Christ many of us been baptized with most of us been baptized in the Holy Ghost and we have a Bible but 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 m many of us don't realize that there are still strongholds in our life that are keeping us from walking in the fullness of the blessing of God and the purpose of God for our lives and 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 unless those strongholds are demolished and removed we will not be able to progress and become all that God wants us to become see the stronghold is a fortified 
dwelling. It's a it, it is a it is a it is a it is it is a fortification or like a fort. In the in the in the, most of us remember have seen those old westerns where uh, the the uh, the the um, settlers would go out and uh, the army would go out to to to, uh, uh, to to conquer a certain territory and when they get out in that territory what they would usually do is they would build a fort they would build a fort they would build something that would be fortified that would be a protection for them against the attacks of their enemies and so I want you to see that strongholds are 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 set up primarily to protect from enemies and to keep enemies from coming in and and uh, taking uh, the lives, taking the territory, and so they, these strongholds are, or these fort, forts are set up primarily to keep the enemy out. A stronghold can be a source of protection for from for us from the devil. That that uh, it's not. There are good strongholds, and then there are bad strongholds. There are strongholds that are that that are set up. The Bible says in Psalms 18 and 2, it talks about that God is our refuge. God is our strong tower. In, in other words, God is our stronghold. He's our protection, and He protects us. So a stronghold can be is a source of defense from the devil. Uh, from demons, from sinful activity, uh, and and uh, it it actually defends and 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 uh, and covers our thoughts and and our valuables. Praise God from the enemy. So strongholds can be a good thing, but also there can be demonic strongholds in our life. Those are strongholds. Those are barriers and forts and fortresses that have been set up and 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 what they do is they protect the demonic strong the, the demonic spirits and demonic influence in our lives and so in order for us to 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 be able to move forward one of the first things we've got to do in the church is we've got to remove strongholds if, if 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 you're go, if I'm going to be able to minister to you and to deal with your issues, one of the first things I got to do is demolish the strongholds in your life. And so it says here in 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 Second Samuel five and seven that when David came into his ruling and his reigning, that uh, uh, praise God over all of Israel. And the first thing he did was take the strongholds of Zion. Now, one of the things you have to understand is that Zion was, was a fortified city in Jerusalem that was fortified. It was, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was occupied by the Jubasites. And the Jubasites had, they were, had so much confidence in the fortress that they had set up that they said to, Day, to David, when David uh, was ready to come and try to take that stronghold they said to David they said David you can't come this is such a fortified city this is such a fortified uh, place until we don't even have to put the army out to protect it we can put the lame the blind and you can't get in here because when you build fortresses, you're building them primarily to be able to keep the enemy out. And they were saying, David, we are secure in our fortresses. We are secure in our stronghold. And we are not afraid of you. We don't have to send the army out. We don't have to send the navy out. All we got to do is put a few blind people. In other words, you can't even defeat the handicap because of our stronghold. But the Bible says, nevertheless, David took the strongholds of Zion. One of the first things is, is that sometimes what we are thinking about is when we think about strongholds, is we all, we're thinking about outside of the church. But Zion also is a type, in the Old Testament, is a type of the New, New Testament church. 
because the Bible tells us in the 12th chapter of Hebrews that we come not to Mount, Z Mount Sinai, but we come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to a numerable company of angels, to the church of the firstborn whose names are written. Zion is also the church, praise God, is also, praise God, uh, 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 called Zion. And so one of, if we're going to move forward is before we try to change the world, we're going to have to change the church. And the first thing we have to do is we've got to change the, we've got to take the strongholds in the church. And so if we don't understand how to take these strongholds, because we have built fortresses around our demons. We've built fortresses around, praise God, uh, uh, the, the, our, our, our thought patterns and our paradigms, and praise God. And so the first thing we got to do is we got to deal with it. And the Bible tells us this. In Romans 12, it says, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The battlefield that we're dealing with in, today in the church is the battle in the mind. The battleground is the battleground of your mind. Because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. You cannot go beyond your thinking. You cannot go beyond your thoughts. What you think, praise God, is, is what you do. What you think is who you are. And if, and if we don't take those strongholds, now let's look at, let, let's go to first, second Corinthians again. And it says, verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now, I'm gonna, I, I want you to, uh, uh, it says casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What Paul is telling us is, is that our warfare is the warfare in the mind. The battleground is your mind. You know, they used to have a commercial say, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. It is your, it is your thoughts that hold you back. It is your thoughts that keep you from walking in the fullness of what God would have you. And unless the strongholds in your mind are pulled down, demolished, there'll be no way in which God can give you or can use you or can do for you what he wants to do for you. How do you know, how do you know that? Because the Bible tells us, praise God, that I have not seen, neither ear heard the things that, have, that God has for them that love them, but they are revealed to us by the Spirit of God. And the Bible says he's able to do exceedingly abundantly about all you can ask or think. You can't even think the big thoughts that God has for your life. God wants to do some great things in your life, but one of the things that he's got to do first is he's got to demolish those strongholds and those thoughts that keep you and hold you back from his purpose and plan for your life. Yeah, that'd be a good place to say amen. In verse 5, it says, in the Amplified, it says, in so much as we refute arguments and theories and reasoning and every proud, lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Now, I like the Amplified Translation. But I'm going to kind of, I'm going to, I want to talk about several words that we have to deal with if we're going to demolish strongholds. One of the things is, is praise God, is you got to deal with the way people think. Because if you don't, if, if that's why when you, the Bible says here, in fact, if you read this, uh, if, you, if you look up this word where it says that the weapons of our warfare in this scripture, if you look up that in the Strong's, when it talks about the weapons of our warfare, it, it, is, it, is, it says the weapons of our apostolic ministry 
or our apostolic, it's a word, stratia, and it means, praise God, our apostolic career, our apostolic warfare. The warfare of an apostle is not, praise God, just, praise God, just fighting demons. He's fighting uh, paradigms, thoughts. He's fighting arguments and philosophies, and praise God. And so he, the whole battle, one of the biggest battles that we fight is the battles that are in the minds of God's people. Because when you get saved, even though you are born again, your mind is still the same. I know your hands look new and your feet did too. But when you got through, the, all of the thoughts and the mindsets that you had before you got saved is still in your mind. That's why you have to come to church and hear somebody preach a message that attacks your thinking, attacks your goofy thinking. He said, be transformed by the renewing of your what? You need a renewed mind more than anything else in the church is we need people with a renewed mind. In other words, praise God, we need to get the garbage out and, 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 and get the new in, the new. The Bible says put on the new man who is created in righteousness and holiness. And so when you come to church, it is we we the, the 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 first thing that we've got to attack is the way you think because it, it, because and it says here that it talks about casting down imaginations imagination we got to deal with your imagination we got to deal with with imagination is is the ability to see the ability to see something that has not yet taken place. It is, it is the ability to, 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 to see things you desire before they ever come to pass. Some have said that, 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 that imagination also could be translated hope. See, faith is the subject of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So your imagination. What is in your imagination? What are you imagining? See, imagination, praise God, is, is, the, is, is the ability to see to to you know some some people say well I, I imagined that I was or I imagined that I was that I imagined that I was this I imagined that 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 I was the king it, it's kind of like a it's kind of like a dream it's kind of like a desire but it's the ability to imagine some of our imaginations is so destructive because our imagination also can be the way we see ourselves we have to be very careful. You cannot allow the devil to play with your mind with imagination. You can imagine yourself in a whole lot of different situations that are not godly. An ungodly imagination. You remember when they were building the Tower of Babel and, and, and the Bible says the Lord came down and he said, these people, I've got to stop them because if I don't, he said the very imagination of their heart is wicked. Sometimes our imagination is built on wickedness. And, and, and until the word of God comes and attacks that imagination and destroys and pulls down that stronghold of imagination, some folk can live in their imagination. Some folk can live in a fantasy land. And, 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 and that thing has to be destroyed. It, it, the Bible says pulling down in one translation, it says demolishing strongholds. Sometimes what you have to do is you just have to, to rip it up and tear it down. You have to demolish it. You have to have a bulldozing anointing. 
You just have to bulldoze it. It's called demolition. I remember when we, we were building Eugene Hogan in a, a manor development, our nonprofit. We were building Eugene Hogan. The first thing that you do, praise God, as a developer, one of the first things, you, you, you get your budget together for your, you know, you have your whole budget for your, for your uh, project, uh, you know, and, and what, but one of the first things when you get ready to, 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 to uh, you've already put in money for the demolishing, for, the, for, for demolition, because you know you're going to have to tap something in order to make something. In other words, you got to tap, I got to tap stuff before I can give you good stuff. I got to tap the stuff you got. I got to tap your the imagination you had. I got I got I got I got to tap stuff in order to now pull down those strongholds and those fortresses that you have set up that have guarded praise God your little old paradigm. So imagination. And then it's and then in in the amplified it says and we refute arguments. Some folk got an argument. They don't have much experience, but they do have an argument. But I've learned this, that an experience beats an argument every time. Some folk, praise God, they always got an argument for why they were the way they are, why it's like they got a good argument, but, but praise God, God's not worried about your argument. I want to demolish your argument. I want to demolish your argument that says, praise God, that, 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 that you can't do any better than what you did because uh, my mama was like this, my grandmama was like this. You don't know I grew up in the ghetto. I grew up on the wrong side of the street. It doesn't make any difference what side of the street or what side of the tracks you grew up on. The Bible says that he's, he, has, he has redeemed you with his blood and he has made you more than a conqueror. He intends for you to rule in life by Christ Jesus. And so that we've got to change your whole mindset. It was said of the, of, 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 uh, in the Revolutionary War that, that there are certain things about mindsets that, will, that can destroy you. And sometimes it's not so much that they're bad things, but they're just things that stand in the way of you really uh, 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 receiving the revelation of what God has for you, what God said about you, what God, uh, what God wants to do in your life. And they say in the Revolutionary War that the, 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 the uh, colonists, the George Washington and the colonists that were, that were fighting against the British, the British mindset of war was different from the mindset of the, of the settlers, of the, of, the, of the colonists. And it said that the, the British, the way that they went to war is they, they dressed up in the red war, uh, uniforms and they marched out. And, and what they would do is they would march out and the enemy would march out and they would get face to and they would start shooting each other and so on and so forth. That's the way they did. That, that's the way they did. So when they came to fight the colonies, they marching. The colonists, they didn't march out to them. They just got behind trees. And they just started picking them off. Because their mindset was war was is you just came out and marched and then your enemy marched. So they're expecting the enemy to do one thing and the enemy just say, well, you know what? I ain't even, you know, look, you know what? These fools is coming out here. And they just got behind trees and they just picked them off. Killed them. You can have a mindset that limits you. See, you come, into the, you come into the house of God and you're thinking a certain way. You know, if, if, you were, if, you, if, you knew, if you were doing hookups in the world before you got saved, when you come to church, you're looking for a hookup. You still got a hookup mentality. You know. Because that's the way you dealt. That's the way you dealt. And, 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 and you will try to use those same schemes until, praise God, until that stronghold is demolished. If you was a schemer, you'd be a schemer when you get, we got to demolish the scheme out of you. We got to pull down the scheme out of you. You don't need schemes, praise God. The Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together and running over. You don't have to come up with a scheme to, to, to praise God, to, to steal from people and to take from people. Amen. 
In other words, you got to have your whole mind renewed, but your mind can't re be renewed until the strongholds are demolished. Arguments need to be demolished. The thing that's interesting about strong, these strongholds that we set up is they protect our little way we want to think. You know, we, we come up with, we come up with, 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 with arguments and then, then also in the Amplified it says and, and uh, refuting arguments and theories. Some of, you know, the Bible, we preach the truth, not a theory. This ain't a theory. This is the theory of God. And, and so many times we have little theories that we have in our mind. We have little, we've come up with, with our hypothesis and, and so on and so forth. Well, the reason that I'm like this or the reason I can't do this or the reason that, I, that, 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 that uh, God uh, uh, really, you know, I'm, 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 God's black, I'm the black sheep of God's family. God don't have no black sheep in his family. You're the children of God. Now we're the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But when we see him, we shall be like he is. In other words, praise God, God don't have no stepchildren. So if you came out of a mentality of, 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 of fatherlessness and so on and so forth, you, you have concepts about fatherhood that God that that doesn't sync with what God is God is a heavenly father he's a loving father he's a father to the fatherless and a judge for the widow God loves you some of us praise God we we have problems with with with, with, with embracing and 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 really completely submitting to God because we ain't never trusted anybody in the world before we got here we ain't trust nobody they told us don't you trust nobody and we come with that mentality and that guards, that's our little guard. See, you just don't trust anybody. See, that's my little guard to guard my little paradigm because you know, you know how people will do. But, but that stronghold has to be pulled down. And you can't all your little theories and, you know, some people have all kinds of theories. And, and their theories have been elevated above God's word, above the knowledge of God, above the word of God. When you come here, you, you need to come here with, with the attitude is that I'm here to have everything that God wants to deal with in my life, in my mind, in my thoughts, in my paradigms, I, everything he wants to change as far as renewing my mind, I'm ready to him to renew my mind. They, they brainwashing you over there. Your brain need a good wash. Need some soap and water and some and a Brillo pad. You need your mind changed. Some see if you don't get people's mind changed, you can't get them to a point. Some people can will will never be healed, and I'll tell you why. Many of them will never be healed. This ain't the reason for everyone, but it's because they can't come to the point where they could believe that God can, can, can do what the doctors and everybody else said could not be done because nothing is impossible with God but the Bible also says nothing is impossible to them that believe and so they can never bring themselves to the place to really believe that God will do it they know he can do it but they don't believe he will do it and they come up with all kind of, you don't know, the doctor told me this is incurable. So what? The Bible says Jesus healed all manner of sickness, all manner of disease. It was every kind of disease. He was healing cancer back then. Praise God. He was healing all kinds of diseases. The Bible talks about Israel did not enter in because of their unbelief that word unbelief there if you if you look it up in the in in uh, in strong it talks about unpersuadableness in other words they could not be persuaded that god would take them into the promised land and some folk you can't persuade them they got every other every excuse they like the man at the at the pool of bethesda jesus said would you be made whole he said you don't know what these folks will do to you when you're trying to get in as soon as I try to get in, somebody jump in ahead of me. 
kick you to the curb, knock you in the head. His mindset was that, that, that I can't be healed. I'm here, but I can't get in fast enough. And Jesus just had to just go on and just, just look, take up your bed and walk, please, man. <laughs> Sometimes God does stuff in spite of us, amen? I got this theory that this, look, God ain't worried about your theory. Your theory about healing. No, he said, he said, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. The Lord shall raise them up. And if he's committed any sins, they shall be forgiven him. He said, by his stripes, we are healed. But some people, you can never, that, that, because they cannot get in their mind that this can happen. Because they've lived so in the natural so long until they've not touched the spiritual. They don't know that the spiritual world created the natural world. Everything that you see was created by an invisible spiritual world. God is a spirit. And you can't, you can't see him with your eyes, but God is more real than anything you see here. Theories. Reasoning. Oh, this is, this is, this is, reasoning is, is a stronghold that if we don't demolish that stronghold, because it, reasoning is is logic some of us so logical we can't be spiritual <laughs> don't get me wrong I, 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 I'm, I, I think I'm a very logical person but when it comes to spiritual things I understand that 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 you cannot understand the spiritual things by logic and some folks reason it out. They can reason, they can logically come up with some reason as to why the things of God are, are, are not for them. Sometimes they'll even get to the point where, yeah, I know that it's true, but it's not for me. Because you don't know. And they have logical reasons. You know, you don't know. I, I, I sinned. I sinned. Did you repent of your sin? Yes. But, but they can't get in their mind that Jesus said, well, let me, let me just say that James, in James, when it talks about the healing scripture, it says that pray, the prayer of fish shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise them up. And if he has committed any sins, they shall be forgiven. In other words, God can forgive you of your sin, heal you, forgive you of your sins at the same time. Reasoning, logic. Some folks are so logical they can't they, they can't believe. Cause let me tell you something. It's no logic for walking on water. Jesus, you can't you can't figure that out. That Jesus just started walking on water. What? How are you gonna logically figure that out? You can't scientifically figure it out. And so you're gonna have to demolish the, the and and if you don't break those limitations those limiting thoughts out of your mind and bring them subject to Jesus Christ who is the healer, the deliverer, the miracle worker. Praise God. God manifests in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. If you don't bring those things under, under subjection to Jesus Christ, then praise God, then you will reason your way out of healing. You will reason your way out of deliverance. You will reason your way out of the blessings of God. You'll always have a reason why. Some people are good at logic. It ain't logical. It ain't logical walking on water. It ain't logical that give and it shall be given. It ain't logical. God's, God's not dealing with logic. See the, see, the Bible says that I have not seen, neither ear heard, neither did enter to the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him. But he has revealed them to us by his spirit. The spirit of God wants to reveal to you things that you can't get out of a book. You can't get in college. One of the main things that they do in college is they're trying, now they're trying to destroy faith when you go to college. I remember talking to my brother, Dr. Hogan, and he was telling me, he said, I, he said that being, you know, uh, being in college, it looked like he was in college all his life. But anyway, 
he talked about he said he 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 he, he was uh got a class and the class was a philosophy class and he said he got the class the philosophy class and he said when he went to the went to the class the first day the instructor said to them and I want y'all to forget everything that you ever known everything that you ever believed just forget it now and now we're going to start from scratch in other words, forget everything you believe, get everything you were ever told, and so on. Why? Because now we are fixing to mess you up. We're going to give you some philosophy. And folks like to philosophize, you know. And we have to understand that, praise God, that, that, that we, we, it is not God wants us to believe his word and to be able to believe his word. And anything that stands in the way of that needs to be destroyed. Anything that stands in the way of you believing in Christ needs to be destroyed. It is evil. It's of the devil. Sometimes, praise God, the, 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 the reason that we are so that we are, we are so bound by these things is because of what we give our mind, what we give our attention to that affects our mind you cannot live your life you know watching things on the internet looking at things that are evil that are contrary to to God contrary to his to his will and his plan some of us spend so much time in uh, television uh, we spend so much time on the internet we spend so much time giving our thoughts to everything and then on, on church today we can't spend one hour listening to a message. But we can watch a four hour movie and, and, and when we all into it. Can't get into praise and worship. Just keep looking forward. Nobody going to know it's you. Can't praise God. But it's amazing what we give our attention to. You've got to give your attention to things that are going to cause you to be able to walk in the purpose and the plan God has for you. You need to hear words, praise God, that, that will cause you, praise God, to know God. If you're going to receive from God, you can't be logical. Now, don't get me wrong. It's, I'm not telling you to throw you, to, to set your brain aside and not use your brain but what I am telling you is that if you're going to receive the, the great blessings of God you're going to have to believe for stuff that are impossible that don't look like it could happen that praise God that the only way it can happen is if God does it amen you have to believe stuff, praise God, that folk tell you, praise God, that ain't true you're going to have to believe God's word you're going to have to say let God be true and let every man be a liar And everything in your mind that's against God, that, 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 that tells that's contrary to the word of God, it needs to be destroyed. Bring it captive to the obedience of Christ. Take your reasoning that don't, that don't set with what God has said and throw it out. God tells you, God speaks to you, praise God, concerning what he's going to do in your life many times. And, and, I, and I've seen it in the prophetic is that God will speak to you concerning what he is going to do in your life and it be so contrary to what praise God the circumstance and the situation is and praise God and there's no logic you can't logic you can't think it out you just got to believe it everything that exalts itself against God's knowledge I have to throw it down I have to, I have to pull down all my imaginations let me tell you something your imagination is based on your meditation. What are you meditating on? Sometimes you meditating on the wrong thing. The Bible talks about, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. And the reason many times our meditation is wrong is because we're watching the wrong things. We're, doing, we, we, we're, we're, we're giving our attention to the wrong thing. 
And then, praise God, the devil will always give us an excuse why God can't do it, why God won't do it. He'll give us an excuse as to why it can't happen to you. Why not you? God is no respecter of person. Do you think God likes me better than he likes you? No. He loves you just like he loves me. And he wants you to have his best. But there's some things, sometimes you, it's the, the, the way we think. The Bible talks about that, that uh, uh, in Philippians to think on certain things. And so your thoughts are the, are the things that control you. Your thoughts are the program. Are the, are, it's the software that makes your physical body and, and your actions manifest. Jesus said, out of the good treasures of a good heart comes good things. Out of the evil treasures of an evil heart comes evil things. In other words, praise God, you, you, the Bible talks about your thoughts, talks about your treasures. One, one Eastern, in the Eastern thought, when they talk about your treasures, uh, the one, one interpretation that they, they know that they're talking about your thoughts. Let me tell you something. Your treasure chest is your thoughts. As long as you think small, you'll be small. And I'm not talking about positive thinking. I'm talking about scriptural thinking. I'm talking about thinking thoughts of God after the scripture. It's finding in the scripture the things, praise God, that God has promised and understanding that anything in my mind that, that is, is against the thing that God has said, God has declared, God has decreed, God has spoken in his word, God has spoken in my heart, that I know, praise God, that those things must be demolished. I must get rid of those thoughts. Some thoughts you cannot have, you cannot be double-minded. The Bible says a double-minded man is, un is, 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 uh, is unstable in all his ways. And so sometimes what happens is, is that we put some good thoughts on you on Sunday before you get out of here on Monday and Tuesday. You didn't got so much thoughts that counter to what we just thought gave you and praise God. And you can't think on these things. You can't be double-minded thinking over here and thinking over here. You got to be single-minded. You got to think on these things. That's why Paul said, think on these things. If whatsoever's pure whatsoever is lovely whatsoever is of a good report think on these things in other words you got to change what you're thinking about your thoughts are powerful so the strongholds of zion must be taken people hear you hear us talk about how god will will bless you if you give some of us have been taught church all the preacher want is your money some of us have been taught that it's all a game. Some of us have been taught, no, don't you trust? If the preacher got a nice car, they say, you know, they'd see the preacher's taking the money. And sometimes we've been, we've been taught that in the world. We come into the church, praise God, and, and that mentality has us bound because in the kingdom of God, the Bible says, Jesus said, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, and running over. So if he can't get you to block out those and to get rid of those, those evil thoughts in your mind that causes you, praise God, to try to operate in the kingdom of God by the kingdom of Satan's laws, You'll never be blessed. You'll never prosper in the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me say this and then I'm going to close. I was, I was, I was looking at um, a video of Derek Prince. And I can't even remember what the video was about, but it was one thing that stood out in my mind because it, 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 it connected me, it, it kind of linked me to something else I heard another great man of God say. But he said something. He said that I, I don't spend a lot of time watching television shows and movies. He said, I don't even spend time, a lot of time reading the paper. He said, the, re the way I stay up on things, he said, it's one magazine 
that 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 kind of gives you the whole months, <laughs> you know, of what's going on in the world. I think it might be U.S. World Report or whatever. He said, and and I'll read that. That's the only thing he said. And then the Bible, the Word of God, and things concerning the Word of God. And we know how greatly that man was used of God. And then, it, it, but it, what it did, it reminded me of something that I heard uh, Lester Summerall say about Smith Wigglesworth, who was who was a, a, a powerful man of God. Uh, and and he said that Smith Wigglesworth said, "I don't. He doesn't. Re, you know, he doesn't read the paper." All he read was the Bible. Now, I'm not trying to tell you to just read the Bible because I know that's impossible for y'all. <laughs> well, I guess all things are possible to believe. Maybe my mindset needs to. But <laughs> this is what I'm getting at. What you give your attention to, that's what you're going to think about. Have you ever noticed that, that if, you, if you watch something on television and you go to sleep, sometimes you'll dream about it? See, because what you give your attention to is what you think about. It's what controls your thoughts. And, 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 and what you need to understand and you need to be honest is that when, you, when your thoughts are inundated with stuff that is not of God, is that you, you, the, you have, and many times what you've done is you've built a stronghold of reasoning. You know, I got a reason why it's like this. You, you build a theory. My theory is this. Or you, or 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 or, or, or you you you've uh, uh, you build a uh, and you, your imagination is telling you this. You're imagining this. Sometimes, praise God, our imagination is off. <laughs> and so we have to. We so Smith so Wiggins said he didn't read the he he didn't read anything but the Bible. And I remember several years ago. When the, when the Lord just, you know, and this has been, oh my goodness, probably over, it's over 25 years ago. The Lord started dealing with me about not spending my time watching television. Now don't get me wrong, I watch television. But I don't watch te television very, I mean, when I watch television, most of the time, I can't even get I can't even get through the show before I have to cut it off and do something else. And, 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 I, and I've learned that I cannot expose myself to any and everything. You know, I, I, don't, I don't frequent movies. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that you're going to hell if you, if you go to movies. But I don't frequent movies. They don't excite me when the newest movie comes out. When the newest Star Wars movie come out, I ain't jumping up and jumping down when I can run to go and see the new Star Wars and see, uh, you know, Luke Skywalker. You say, why are you saying? Because we, we are giving our attention to so much. Why, how much time have you given and attention have you given to the Word of God? I mean, do you, do you ever go down the street and, and pop in a, a good tape of me preaching the word of God and listen to it and let and marinate in it and let it get down beyond, praise God, just a Sunday morning sermon, but allow it to go down? Sometimes there's things that you will not hear unless you hear it over and over and over again because faith comes by hearing and hearing, not having heard. I heard that before. That doesn't do it. You have to keep hearing it and hearing it and hearing it. And when that when when that sludge hammer of of the word of God hits those strongholds, sometimes praise God. The Bible says that His word is like a hammer. Now, I don't know about you, but when I see that scripture, I don't see no little hammer. I don't see no little hammer with a little two teeth on the side. I see a sludge hammer. Because what you need, the word of God many times come at you like a sludge hammer. It, it, it hits the very thing, praise God, that you have built up to protect your little self, protect your little way of thinking, to protect your little house that you built, praise God. And God is coming to destroy those strongholds so that he can deliver you, praise God, and he can bring you into his purpose. What is your stronghold? What have you built? 
What arguments have you put up as to why you're not receiving what God has for you? What, what have you, what, have, what, what, what uh, uh, imagination? They, they, I remember hearing of, a, of, of uh, children that would go through certain trauma and and uh, and it said and and I and I've even heard some of them in interviews say they say how in the world did you deal with being abused or how in the world did you deal with all of this and they they'll say that while this was going on I imagined myself doing something else and in other words praise God somehow they they were able to take themselves out of that situation and use their imagination and 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 so it, it, it sometimes what what we do is is we'll we'll use our imagination to not face up to truth sometimes we'll we'll use our imagination not to have to face up to 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 change not have to face up to cha to changing the way we think or the way that we walk or the way that we talk or the way that we do things It's a battleground. The strongholds that we're dealing with today in the church is that the church many times thinks the same way as the world. Is that the world has trained us. We've, we've, we've watched television and they've trained us so until we're beginning to believe what they have, the, the, the propaganda, as it were, that they put out. And they brainwashed us. How can you, how, how can you, I, I was 